I told my coworker losing weight will get her better career prospects. Story 1. Now, today's first story comes from a bunch of subreddits, as the, am I the A? Whole, today I messed up, and, relationship advice, as well. From a deleted user who says, am I the A? Whole for advising my coworker to lose weight if she wants better career prospects. Oh boy. I, 29, male, work in marketing, which is a job where your appearance can really affect your perception by clients and higher ups. There's a woman in my office, I call her Sarah, 27, female. There is no way to put it, she is quite overweight. I've observed that she doesn't seem to be taken as seriously as the other employees. I've seen clients and higher ups show more engagement when interacting with the slimmer employees. And that during meetings, when she shares ideas or suggestions, her ideas are often overlooked or dismissed more quickly compared to the others. The other day, we were both in the break room and she was complaining about not getting the promotion she was hoping for. I hinted to her that maybe losing some weight would improve her chances. She was shocked and got angry at me, telling me that I was nasty and insensitive. I told her that I had nothing against her and that I was just trying to help her out with some feedback. I like Sarah and I think she's very good at her job. I just think losing weight would be good for her. Since then, she's been avoiding me, and a couple of other co-workers have hinted that my comment was out of line. I was in no way intending to offend her. I was just trying to give some friendly advice. Am I the A? Whole for advising Sarah to lose weight if she wants better career prospects? So, there was a string of comments where it got a little bit heated. The first comment says, yes, you're the A, whole. You had no reason to comment on her weight, but you chose to do so anyway. Don't comment on people's looks unless it's an issue for HR, in which case, make those comments only to HR. Then this next heavily downvoted comment says, I like how all the A, whole answers seem to be utterly and totally unaware of the numerous studies that show people react to attractive people more positively. Op might be a tactless A, whole, but they're also absolutely factually correct that getting in shape would make her more likely to get promotions and more successful as a marketing agent. The last comment replies to that one, saying, and quoting op, might be a tactless A, whole, and says, yes, that's the reason he's the A, whole. A tactless A, whole is an A, whole. It's logical and true. This isn't is the op technically correct. Is the op an A, whole? The commenter says, of course you're the A, whole. There's no way you're 29 in marketing and have so little social skills. Your advice was unsolicited and rude. And one more comment which says, marketing can be a really toxic field, and I've met my fair share of mean girls and self-important people working in it. It's honestly not surprising to me that op acts like this. I'm just sort of rubbing my forehead right now, just thinking, what possessed you? That to come out for that to go through your head and come out your mouth, you know? You're sat in your break room, she's talking about not getting a promotion, and then you think, oh, this would be a good time to say this. Oh dear me. Yes, of course you're the A. Whole in this situation. Of course. Op had another post on the, today I messed up, subreddit. It says, a week back, I made a post on, am I the A? Whole, about advising my coworker Sarah to lose weight in order to be taken more seriously in our workplace. After all the comments, I realized that I was in the wrong. My comment was inappropriate and hurtful, and I needed to apologize to Sarah properly. So I approached Sarah again. I admitted I was wrong in saying what I said and I was deeply sorry for hurting her. In the course of the conversation, I accidentally suggested for her to start going to the gym. I immediately regretted saying it, she started to cry. I tried to apologize, but the damage was done. The next day, I was called into HR for a meeting. Sarah had reported this second conversation to them. HR told me any remarks about my coworker's appearance were considered, and the fact that I did it more than once was completely unacceptable. They then told me I was fired. I was shocked. I'd never gotten into any trouble at work. I didn't expect to get fired so suddenly, with no warnings or anything. I genuinely thought I was helping Sarah. I would never hurt her intentionally or anyone else. I feel so terrible. Sarah blocked me, so I reached out to a friend to send my apology letter to her. A friend told me Sarah was still very upset and hated me. This job was so important to me. I don't think I'll find another one like this with as high of a salary. I don't know how I'll tell my girlfriend and my family about this. Two weeks ago, I was talking to them about the possibility of a promotion, and now I'm unemployed. I guess I learned my lesson the hard way. What the f.ck was that? So, you went to apologize to her? Good one. But in the course of the conversation, you pretty much said exactly the same thing again. You accidentally suggested for her to start going to the gym. Oh dear. Now's the time to leave her alone. She ain't going to want nothing to do with you. Leave the letters. Leave her alone. But Mega Duck Cougar Boy says, Oh, it's such a Reddit story lol. 
That unsolicited advice about my appearance was unwelcome. Okay, I'm sorry, but here's more unsolicited advice. Dude, leave her alone. But why did she block me? I really need to know how great of a guy the first um, the garage man says. Have you considered showing up at her house with a gift certificate to Planet Fitness as a way of making her feel better? Opie says, I mean, I have a leftover gift card for. Oh, oh, you be. I mean, I have a leftover gift card for Anytime Fitness that I could forward to her through one of her friends, as I don't know her address. I don't know if she'd appreciate it though, unequivocally. Maybe replies that and says, oh, so you're street. Id, street. Id, street. Id. So then users found another post from op. Story 1 update. That was in their history, of course, titled, My girlfriend, 28, female, and family is upset because I, 29, male, showed up at their holiday destination without their agreement. What do I do? And this happened 8 days after everything else. I've been with my girlfriend for around 2 years. A few weeks ago, my girlfriend Anna planned a 3-week holiday with her family, their longest holiday in a while. I asked to join because I felt uncomfortable with her going away for so long. She also has cousins there who I'm worried could be a bad influence. She told me I couldn't. I didn't think it was a good idea for her to go without me, so I found the Airbnb location on her computer, took note of it, and flew over there myself when they were on holiday, just to make sure things were going all right. I thought it would be a sweet gesture and they would be happy to see me. But once I arrived and rang the doorbell, her dad opened the door, asked me what I was doing, then told me to go away. When I explained, I called Anna because it would be easier to resolve it with her there, but she was out. So I waited outside for her to come back. Her dad came out again and started to thr. Dot 10 to get physical if I didn't leave. I then apologized quickly and left. When she heard about it, she texted me, saying she was upset because this was a family holiday and I'm not respecting her privacy. She also told me her parents hate me. I had to fly back home as I couldn't afford to stay there. I'm really worried what is going to happen to her without me on her long holiday. How do I deal with her cousins, make sure she's alright, and repair my relationship with Anna and her parents without me being there? So there were some top comments after this. One user writes, what the f.ck am I reading? This is stalker psychoshish, t. You weren't trying to be sweet. You planned to force your way into a vacation you were explicitly not invited to because of your insecurity. Therapy. The fact that you think this was okay in any way is absolutely nuts. K says, F. King therapy jail. This is how women get killed by their boyfriends. He doesn't seem honest either. I bet he thought he would catch her doing something. Hats and Topcoat says, so you asked if you could come on this trip. She said no, and then you expected her to be happy to see you on the trip? OP says, I bet she would have. Been happy if she opened the door, but her parents just convinced her that I was in the wrong. Stardust says, why are you so concerned about the cousins? You didn't provide any explanation as to why you believe they could be a bad influence. You said this was the reason you crashed a family vacation. Hopi says, well, it's not the only reason. Cousins like going out to parties a lot and stuff. Absolute madness, man, and a way to BL. W your life up in a series of posts, right? That's some crazy A. S level behavior to turn up at the door. What the F.CK is going through these people's minds? What do you expect to happen? What is the outcome of this situation? Put yourself in their shoes, you knocking on their door, traveling to the holiday destination. Hello. Here I am, and you just expect them to go. Hey, come on in, make yourself at home, join the holiday. Of course not, they're going. What the f.ck is my daughter dating right now? Now, totally off topic, but a little story that popped into my head. When I was younger and my next door neighbor at the time, at that age I can't remember exactly what age I was, pretty young though, and two of my best friends lived next door to me. And their mom, who was a single mom, was dating this guy at the time. I'm not sure where she met him or anything, and he kind of looked like the actor. I might butcher this pronunciation, so I do apologize, Luis Guzman. He looked like him. Basically, we heard that she had broken up from this guy. He lived about three hours north of us, you know, we was in Oxfordshire and I think he was sort of, like, Blackpool way. And there was about four of our kids just sat on my neighbor's wall, we were just sort of chatting away, just messing about out, and then suddenly this car pulled up and my friend's mom got her kids in. And so it was just me and another friend who was sat on the wall outside, just thinking, what the f.ck.s going on here? And then this guy comes out with a guitar in his hand and he just stands at the front, singing, playing this guitar, singing love songs at her. I can't remember exactly what the songs were, but it was pretty much a tune. I remember us clapping along at one point. But again, looking back on that situation, and I'm glad the story reminded me of it, you just think, what the f.ck was going through that guy's mind? What was he expecting? 
Has he just watched one too many movies and he thinks, F.C.K. me. She's going to love this. Take the guitar out, strum a few tunes, she could be all over it. Has to be said, though, you had a pretty good voice. But you stood there in the middle of a council estate, serenading someone outside their house who wants nothing to do with you, which of course attracts the attention of all the local nosy, myself included, of course. I was something in the wall, I had front row seats. Anyway, totally random story there. What do you guys make of this? Situation? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And let's move on to another story. Story 2. From It's Ely Bear, who says, My motherly aunt wants me to give up my unborn baby girl to my godly, infertile cousin. Now, there's a few warnings on this one before we do get into it. In case you do want to skip the story, please feel free to do so. It contains talk of fertility issues, death of loved ones, possible religious abuse. Now let's get into it. I, 24, female, am currently 8 months pregnant with a baby girl, and my aunt and cousin have been giving me trouble since I announced the news. My partner and I already adore our girl and have no plans to give her up, but my aunt wants me to give up my child to my cousin, who's been suffering from infertility for the past 5 years. For more context, my aunt has raised my sister and me as a motherly figure after our mother passed away when we were very young. We've been quite close with our aunt and cousin throughout our life and have been trying to support my cousin through her struggles with infertility. My aunt is also very religious, being a Mormon who regularly attends church and has a very rigid, close-minded view on morality and values and living a good life. She believes that a child deserves a strong, foundational religious upbringing with a strong, providing father and a loving, attentive mother. Since my partner is not a Christian and because we both work full-time jobs and careers, she believes that my child will grow up confused and misguided in our household due to our religious differences, lacking a proper sense of identity and adequate care. She says she fears that our child's well-being will not be put first in such an environment, and our kid could likely go down a dark, immoral path. According to her, my cousin, who works part-time from home with her husband, are way better able to provide my child with a loving home with good values and religion. I have both my aunt and cousin blocked on most forms of communication. I have moved to a new home where they do not know the address. My partner and I also got married in a private ceremony so they won't have control over my medical decisions. Out of the two, my aunt has been more aggressive towards me and even showed up at my old apartment one day to scream and argue with me about the situation. She, in a fake nice tone, tried to get me to come with her to a cafe near the church to speak with me about the baby, even when I told her there is nothing to be discussed and I'm keeping the baby. I spoke with the apartment manager and had to hide until she left after half an hour. My aunt also has her church friends after me. They sometimes regularly send me hostile text messages and voicemails. My cousin has been on the quieter side with me and has been struggling with depression and trauma after losing a pregnancy last year, ending in a stillbirth of a baby girl after preterm labor at 30 weeks. She's been regularly posting on social media and has joined motherhood-related groups. I've heard through gossip that she's trying to get a baby through those groups and has been banned from a considerable amount of them, to her dismay. She had been harassing young moms and widows for their babies. My cousin is desperate for a baby to fix her family and is apparently waiting for me to give birth to my baby girl. So she apparently sees her own late baby in my baby. My aunt and her are apparently sure I'll be overwhelmed with my decision and the responsibilities with motherhood, that I will give up or give more to my baby by letting my cousin adopt her. My aunt says that giving my baby to my cousin shouldn't be as hard as it could be because we are family, and I could have a baby later on as I'm still young and have plans to attend grad school after working for a while. My cousin also apparently wants to get into contact as we had before my pregnancy. I will not be speaking to her again until after I give birth to see where she is then and to prevent further stress during my pregnancy. I've been very supportive of her through her infertility journey and generally like them more than growing up, but the behavior and thinking has shocked me and are making me fear for my safety. I'm planning a big wedding party for next year since my partner and I privately got married this year, and I'm not sure if my cousin and aunt will be invited and able to come. I have a lot of family support from both sides right now, apart from those who are close to them and on their side. But I'm not sure if that support will be strong in a year and what my relationship with my aunt and cousin will be then. I've skipped some family events that I know they will attend, but I don't want to miss out on these family gatherings and fun forever. I'm not sure how the future will look with my aunt and cousin after my baby and the issues that arise with that. Any support would be appreciated. So as always, there's some story 2 comments and OP's replies. Someone says, that's your baby and your baby alone. Get law enforcement involved if you have to. Get restraining orders if you have to. If you ever do talk to your aunt and cousin again, remind them how there are plenty of other babies in your area that are waiting to be adopted. Best of luck and congratulations.
OP says, thanks. Regarding adoption, I don't think my cousin would be a great adoptive mother, so I'd rather not encourage her on that. Based on what I know, she wants a baby girl right now and the baby has to be like her, aka white and have whiter features and must not have any issues she does not want to deal with or involve the birth mother and pretty much wants to act like the adoption never happened. Her mentality tells me she's only adopting for selfish reasons and does not want to make the adoption the beautiful thing it can be for everyone involved. Although I'm not giving her my baby, I'm hypothetically concerned of how she would treat me and try to alienate me from any relationship with the child if I'm in that position. Someone says, please, whatever you do, do not allow your aunt or cousin to be anywhere near your child. Do not allow them to hold your child. Do not ever, ever allow them to babysit your child because your child will disappear. If it's all possible in the future, maybe consider moving out of that city. Make sure you have cameras set up around your house. Even if they don't know where you live now, there's always a chance they could follow you home from work. Be hyper vigilant. Congratulations on the soon to be birth of your little one. Opie says, my partner and I have moved out of the city and into a new home recently. My aunt and cousin have become aware of this but don't know the address. I don't think much of being followed home from work, but since they don't know where I live anymore, they may try something at my workplace. I'll have to talk about this more with my coworker and boss and alert them sternly. Then Op talked about the religion and where they stand on it. They said, I was raised Mormon, and my aunt has always been pushing the religion and all of its components on me and my sister. Now we are both not very religious and do not regularly attend church. I still believe in Jesus, but I'm definitely not near what my aunt is and wants me to be in religion. She says she's disappointed with me on that and is using my lack of devotion to say that my baby will be even worse off than me and go down the wrong path if I'm like this with a Mormon upbringing. Hope then comes in with her story 2 update and says, this will be a small update. We got in contact with a local church leader and talked to them about the situation with my aunt and cousin, who are both active members. We talked to him for a while. He initially dismissed my concerns as personal conflict between family and tried to refer us over to counseling services. We explained to him that my cousin is dealing with trauma from her baby's death and she's having false hopes about adopting my baby, which would be raised in a good home. We also told him that my aunt is feeding into those hopes and has been harassing me on her behalf, causing disturbance and a lot of stress. He told me he understood my side and he knew what my cousin had been going through with her inability to have kids. He said he would contact my aunt and cousin to see what they have to say about the situation. I talked again with him today. He said that my aunt and cousin would like to speak with me, that they were concerned that I stop communicating with them, especially since I moved away. I explained to him that their behavior regarding my baby influenced me to do those things and pressed him on what they said. He said that my cousin had talked with a church therapist and was looking into adoption to start a family because her IVF treatments were likely not going to produce a child with her condition. I emphasized to him that I was not giving up my baby and that my cousin had been thinking such. He said he understood that and started asking me for personal details on how I was doing now. He was again trying to set up a meeting between us and my aunt and cousin, and referring us to services. I told him I was not comfortable with that at the moment, and he told me to at least call my cousin once. He said he will meet with my aunt on Sunday since I was too scared to do it on my own. The call ended after that. I'll comment any update on what he says in the coming days under this post. Edits. I'm not satisfied with his response and do not like that he's putting pressure on me with reconnecting with my aunt and cousin. He says he understands my concerns, but I think he's being rather dismissive of them and trying to force us to resolve our issues. My partner and I thought it was worth a shot reaching out to him because he has influence and religious authority over my aunt and cousin. I'll see what he says on the next phone call and see what I can do to make him care more. Edit to make it clear. I didn't give him any personal information and have no plans for any in-person meeting with aunt and cousin. We're in contact with legal help. We do not live in Utah. Then some more relevant comments on OP's story too. OP's replies on the church leader not believing her and how he is helping her and her husband. OP says, that may be why he's trying to refer us over to church counseling. Someone says, he says he will talk to my aunt, and I would just play along and see what he, they say after that. After this, I'm not sure how helpful involving the state president will be and if I want to pursue that. Our church leadership has a reputation on focus on what benefits them and often pivot to that even if they initially side with you and try to help. My aunt and cousin are rather wealthy, so their tithe is probably worth enough for him to firmly faith of them. Someone says, 100% a trap yikes plus the way the church. Lear dismissed op as being too scared was extremely condescending and manipulative what a scummy way for him to behave f.ck that guy. Opie says, that comment really upset me after I told him everything that was going on and my fears. I'm not just too scared I fear for the safety and well-being of my family. 
I fear for the possible escalations my aunt and cousin's expectations and actions and more. These fears are real and are very valid given the circumstances that really bothered me. Someone says to why are you even risking it they will get your address and then pass it on to your aunt. They may try to follow you back home after that meeting to know where you live. Possibly find out other details too, like your hospital address from the church leader, and they can get there with an excuse of checking on you and get your baby. I've heard of real cases where they took newborn babies to another state from the hospital itself so it'd be harder for the police to track them down. Please don't associate with them any longer, not the church and not your auntie and cousin either. Don't risk your baby being. You're the one who will suffer at the end, and trust me, the church won't be able to help you if things go wrong. If it's possible, move somewhere as far as you can for the sake of your baby's safety. Opie says, we talked with him over the phone and have no plans right now for any in-person meetings, and that was Opie's last update on the matter. And all I can say is, like, you know, I don't know the ins and outs of how all this works, but all I can say is, you know, just cut contact from these people. Don't keep going back to the religious guy. He sounds like he's untrustworthy. The whole situation is absolutely terrifying. At the same time, all I can say is that you just need to keep away from them all, cut contact completely, disappear from them. But what do you guys make of this situation? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Now, just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in today's stories. Your love, your support, your time always means the absolute world to me. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Take care, your cherished so-and-so. Much love.